rejoice in voice and I rejoice in heart, oh God. We give you glory and we give you honor, oh God. We magnify you, oh God, with our very being, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, with our voices, we say, how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. And he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord God. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Is Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We worship and we praise you, Lord God. For you alone are great, oh God. You alone are great. Great are you, Lord, oh God. Great are you, Lord. You are above every name, oh God, above everything. You looked around and could not find any other God but yourself. Oh God, you give us life and you love us, Lord God, unconditionally, Lord God. And we bless your name for that.
no question that you are great, oh God. We don't have to question your greatness, oh God. We don't have to question your power, oh God. We don't have to question your sovereignty, oh God. For you are sovereign, oh God. You are the creator of heaven and earth, oh God, of all things, oh God. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof, oh God. So with our lungs, oh God, with the air that you've given us, the breath that you have breathed within us, oh God, we pour out our praise on you, Lord God. We pour out our praise on you, Lord God. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Anybody willing to cry?
and it reads as following. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. That means no one is left out from praising the Lord. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us. If I don't say anything else, that's enough to give him praise for. His kindness, his merciful kindness is great towards me. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 118 goes on to say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the living God. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. I was playing with the grandson yesterday, and I just thought about something when I read that. And as we were playing, he put up his hand, and he said, mercy, have mercy on me. And so many times, we want the Lord to have mercy on us, but we have to learn how to extend mercy to someone else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the living God. We give God praise for another day. Amen. Amen. Another opportunity Amen. to just be in his presence, to Amen. magnify his name, and to hear a word from Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Wherever you are, I have a short word to share with you. And we will be coming from the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel in the 18th verse. And Hallelujah. I did not know what Sunday school was going to be about today, but my word, my message this morning is actually, actually a continuation of what Sunday school was about this morning. As I was reading in the book of Samuel, um, the first few chapters, I came across something that stuck with me, and it was the, in the 18th chapter, and it said it three different times, and it said that David behaved himself wisely. Wherever you are, just say, say out loud, behave wisely. Behave wisely. That stuck with me, behave wisely. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a few verses from the 18th chapter, and then we're going to go into the word. We're going to talk about the observation of this word, and then the interpretation of how we can apply this to our own lives. Yeah. We all know that the word, the scriptures were written, written for our learning and for our understanding. And we thank God for every word that's written in there that we may, amen, be better, amen, that we may hear clearer from the Lord, that we may do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will bless, Lord God, this word. Lord, this word is already blessed, but you will bless the speaker, bless the ears, Lord God, bless the eyes, bless the mind, bless the hearts of those, oh God, that will hear in person, on stream, and later on, Lord God. May, Father God, be, they bear fruit, Lord God. May there be revelation and illumination, Lord God, in their lives, Lord God. May there be encouragement by your word, Father God. And most importantly, we pray that you get the glory, Father God, for we were created for your glory, oh God. Be thou glorified, Father God, in our lives. Be thou glorified through your word, Lord God. And may, Lord God, the devil continue to be terrified. And we just give you glory and honor, Lord God, that you have justified us and you have sanctified us, oh God. We thank you that your word is always true and your word is always right. Now, Lord God, may our hearts be permeable to receive your words. May our ears, Lord God, be sensitive enough to hear it clearly, oh God. May our eyes see the words clearly, Lord God, as they come off the page and may our mind understand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. First Samuel, the 18th chapter. Amen. And I'm going to start at verse 4, and I'm going to read down to 9. And verse 4 says, and Jonathan, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. And his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. And here is that, that word that came to me. And behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people. And also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. 
And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Verse 9, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Go down with me to verse 11. And Saul cast the javelin, and he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. I want to let y'all know the enemy is afraid of us. That's I'm right. talking about Hallelujah. the devil. That's right. I'm talking about the devil. Yes. I'm not talking about people. I'm yes. talking about the devil. Hallelujah. He's afraid of us because of the anointing that's on our life. Hallelujah. That we have plans for us that he can never have. Yes. And that has been given by God. 13 says, Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David, here it is again, and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. This sentence was said more than once in this verse, and it stood out to me that the Lord was speaking and saying to me and us that there's a certain way we ought to conduct ourselves, and that's to behave ourselves wisely. Why would the Lord God allow it to be written more than once in this one chapter? I just read it two times. Yeah. How many know that there's something about numbers? Here we yeah. go. Yeah. Amen. Um, at verse 15. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Go down to 28 with me. <clears throat> and Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David. And that Michelle, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy continually. Mm -hmm. Behaving ourselves wisely, yes. the anointing that is on us, yes. caused the enemy to constantly be afraid of us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're going to stop doing what they're going to do. No, but there's that. a fear inside of them because of what's inside of us. Yes. Verse 30 says, Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, after they went forth, that David, here we go, behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Three times we hear yeah. that David yeah. behaved himself wisely. Yeah. Yeah. We all know, you may have your seats, mm -hmm. That Jehovah God was the God of Israel. And Jehovah utilized judges to lead and govern the people when there was not an actual king to lead the people of Israel. God was their king. The scripture tells us that they desired to be like the nations around them, rejecting the leadership of the judges and priests and God. And instead of Jehovah being their king, they wanted a king like the other nations. How many know that we are called not to be like others? That's right. We are called to be different, yes. and we are called for God to be our king. Mm -hmm. Samuel, one of Israel's greatest prophets, priest, and, la and the last judge of Israel, was now old and had priestly sons that turned away from God. Mm -hmm. They took bribes and they perverted justice, which did not follow. They did not follow in the footsteps of their father. Mm -hmm. They did not lead the people righteously. It says the people used the wrongdoings of the sons to build a case against Samuel and God Amen. and his sons. Yeah. A lot of times when we want to look at other people and find fault in other people to be the way we are, it never stands before God. Yeah. Even though the priestly sons of Samuel were not following Samuel and were not walking righteous, it gave the people of God no reason to say yeah. we want to go a different way because yeah. of what you have, who you have put over us. Yeah. Yeah. We still are commanded and we we still are accountable to live right, to yes. walk right, yeah. to think right, yeah. to breathe right, to yeah. operate wisely, yeah. no matter who is over us and how they are yeah. conducting themselves. Hallelujah. The people use the Samuel sons and what they were doing as an excuse to want to be other than what God wanted them to be, Jesus. to serve someone other than who God told them to serve. Amen. 
They have rejected God. And so Samuel tells them what will happen if they take a man versus taking, keeping God, Jehovah, as their king. But the people insisted still that, and God gave them just what they wanted. Dan Samuel ran down every single thing that a, a man with the king would do, but they still wanted a king. A lot of times God will show us, God will speak to us. There will be dreams. The words will come off the page. He told lies when he was confronted with his, with his disobedience. He was self-centered and everything was I, I, I and not the Lord. If we go back a few chapters, we will see that when he uh, sacrificed, he took on the priestly office and made the sacrifice. And Samuel asked him why. He never repented, but his response was, I the people had left me. It was all about him, but nothing about the Lord. He was selfish and self-centered. Yes. And so God tells Samuel, it is not you they have rejected, but it is me. That's right. And this is a lesson for all of us, whether we're in ministry or not. When we're walking in obedience to the word of God, when we're speaking in obedience to the word of God, when we're living in obedience to the word of God, when we're sharing in obedience to the word of God, and when it is rejected and people decide another way, another thing, another person, it is not us that they're rejecting, but it is God. Yeah. Give them what they ask for, he says. And sometimes God will give us what we want and we keep on pressuring just so we can see that that wasn't the way to go. And so a human king will take advantage of them is what Samuel told them. He's going to impose harsh rules on you and laws on you, but they say give it to us anyway. We feel that things are so dis out of order the way they are. We think this will be a better way. Instead of waiting on the Lord and being of good courage, instead of trusting God that he knows what he's doing, Instead of examining themselves and saying, if things are out of order, there's nothing wrong with God, then there must be something wrong with me. Hallelujah. And so, so God tells Samuel to anoint a king. He gives him specific instructions of who to anoint and where to find him and what to say to him. And so Saul, being a Benjamite, was known to be very hand neck with and who we want to be with and who we want to walk with. And especially us ladies, every time somebody asks you what kind of man you want, that's the first thing we say, tall, Amen. dark, and Hallelujah. handsome. Amen. Tall, dark, and handsome ain't always good for you. Amen. God gives us what we need, not what we want, because sometimes our want gets us in trouble. Sometimes our wants are too tainted, amen, to bring us to the king. Yeah. We need people that's going to bring us to the king, not draw us away from the king. So Saul was unsure about being king because he was the he came from the smallest tribe. He was unsure about being the king because of where he came from, not because he knew he felt like he needed uh, he was inadequately equipped, but he was looking at where he came from. Yeah, that's right. But we see later that he was self-centered, he was disobedient, he was ambitious about everything being about him. He was jealous, he was hateful, he was a conspirer of, to a yeah. murder. Yes. Which is not a good recipe for following God and keeping his commandments. Yes. There are no perfect leaders. We all have flaws. We yes. all have strengths and we all yes. have weaknesses. Yes. But most importantly, as a leader, we have to have a heart that's willing to be obedient and repentant Hallelujah. at all times. Hallelujah. And so Saul disobeyed the command of and the word of God on more than one occasion. Costing him his lineage and the kingdom reign. He offers the priestly sacrifice a few chapters back, maybe around the 15th chapter. He couldn't wait on Samuel. Samuel gave him instructions. Yes. He said, wait for me yes. seven days yes. and I'll be there to make the sacrifice. Yes. But then he started to get anxious and fearful. This is why we cannot operate in fear because fear will cause us to do things out of order. Fear will get us in trouble. Fear can even cause things to be stripped from us. And so fear set in on combination with him being self-centered. Yeah. And he said, I, the people had left me, yeah. so I had to do yeah. something. I had to do it. I know you said seven days, but you you wasn't here in time. You see how he put the blame and did not take the credit for himself? I know you said seven days, but you wasn't here in time. So I had to do something because the people had left me. It's not about you, but it's about God. The battle is always God. God got it. But we have to learn how not to be moved by fear and operate in faith. We've got to learn how to rebuke fear and tell fear to go back where you came from. Faith over fear. Faith, full assurance, and trusting God. 
Not believing false evidence that it seems to appear real. And so in chapter 15, we're going to walk through these scriptures, of these chapters real quick. And I pray that I won't um, hold you too long, that I'll keep your attention because I feel like this is something we need for our learning. We need for our experience. We need for our walk. We need so that we can be obedient. We need so that we can learn from the mistakes of others. Yeah. The words are not written because these people were all perfect, yeah. but it was written so that we can learn something yeah. from them, yeah. whether it's good or bad. To help affect how we communicate with God, how we listen to God, and how we obey God and do his bidding. And so in chapter 15, God rejects Saul and tells Samuel, the next king will be a man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. He didn't say a perfect man. He didn't say a handsome man. He didn't say a man who's going to get everything right. But he's going to be after my heart. Yeah. Amen, amen. After his heart, preacher, what do you mean after his heart? What is that about? David was always humble. God looks for humility. It says a proud heart, a proud spirit, God will reject. But a humble spirit, God welcomes. I'm paraphrasing the scripture, but I just want us to know that God don't respond to pride. Not the way we expect him to. But David was always humble. And when he was confronted with his disobedience, when he was confronted with his failures, when he was confronted with his issues, he quickly, 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 quickly fell to his knees. I'll give you an example. When the prophet came to tell David about his, um, his mishap with Bathsheba, his uh, uh, adulterous affair with Bathsheba, and him conspiring to kill Bathsheba's wife, David didn't say, well, he shouldn't have went to war. Well, she shouldn't have been naked. Well, she should have been in her bathroom and not on the roof. He quickly fell to his knees and began to say, against God and God alone have I committed such sin. And then he didn't stop there. He said, there's something that has to be done in me. The people of Israel never looked at themselves and said, something needs to be done in me. He said, something needs to be done in me. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So when he is rejected, I'm talking about Saul, because of his constant disobedience and unrepentant attitude, he is replaced by a man that is after God's own heart. Yes. This man is a man of valor. He was a worshiper. He was a praiser. Yes. These are attributes that should be a part of our lives. We should be worshipers and praisers. He was considered the least. And he, but he operated in faith and trust in God and not fear and pride. He was the youngest of his brothers, the least likely to be to succeed, the least likely to be picked, the least likely with the job that nobody else wanted. But he operated in faith and trust. Therefore, he was able to keep his sheep because he operated in faith and trust and he didn't operate in fear and pride. Because he operated in faith and trust, he was able to bring down animals that was three to four times his size because his trust, faith and his trust was in God Almighty. Jesus. Amen. Chapter 16 says Samuel anoints David as king. And in 16.7 it says the Lord tells Samuel to look not on his countenance or on his height or statue for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Yeah. For man looketh on the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yeah. Yes, David, the youngest of his, bro eight, of his seven brothers, he was a shepherd taking care of his father's sheep. He was ruddy and with all of, of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. He is anointed as the next king in the presence of his father and his brothers. Chapter 16 says when Samuel gets there, being human, even though he was a, a great prophet, being human, he immediately went to Iliad, the oldest. And out of tradition, it was always the oldest that the rights was extended upon, that the, uh, the blessings was extended upon. And so he goes to the oldest thinking this is who God has as king. And when he gets to him, God says, not the one. And he moves to the next one and he moves to the next one. And when he gets to number seven and God is still saying, not the one, he says, Jesse, you is there any more sun somewhere? Because all I'm hearing is no. And I know God told me to come here. I know God said the king is in this house. But where is the king? Because all I've heard is no. 
Jesse says, I have one more, my youngest one. He's out there in the fields with the sheep. He's an old ruddy boy tending to my sheep. Samuel says, I won't go nowhere until you go get David because that's who God has told me to anoint. And so now he's anointed in the presence of his father and his brothers. And so 16, in chapter 16, it all goes on to tell us when the spirit of the Lord left Saul, he wanted someone to play before him. Jesus. David has been anointed and now he's quiet and he has a run shouting all over everywhere and bragging about yeah. I'm the next king yeah. and Saul ain't That's nothing. Right. He can't do I, I, nothing I, right. He right. need to go Come sit on. down and get out Come the way on. because yes. God got me going here and I'm going to do things much yeah. better than him. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say a word, but he behaved himself wisely, waiting on God to elevate him to his position. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Didn't even brag about the fact that he had to go and soothe Saul when he was uncomfortable, when his spirit was Speak uneasy. It. Speak it. He just went with, without any hypocrisy. He went and used the gift God gave him Jesus. to soothe the spirit yeah. because he saw a man that needed help. Yeah, Jesus. Needed ministering to. In spite of me getting ready to replace you, yeah. I see there's ministry Woo. that needs to be done. And God has put within me what is needed for you. Yeah. Jesus, my God. And so he goes and he begins to play his heart for him. And, and Saul, is Saul is told about David from his other servants. People are talking about you. People are talking about what you are able to do. People are talking about the gift in you. And they will set you up. They will put you where you need to be. People are talking. Don't be so anxious. God's got this. Jesus. Come on. First, first yeah. time. Not only can he play an instrument, but he's a mighty man of valor. Amen. He's a man of war and are imprudent in matters. He becomes Saul's armor bearer. Jesus. Amen. My God. We all know. Jesus. He fought bears and lions. He, he protected his sheep. And so in verse, in chapter 17, it says David is sent by, he goes back, he does his job, keeps his mouth shut, behaves himself wisely, do what he's supposed to do, and does not brag about what was done, what was on his anointing. Amen. And so now in chapter 17, people are talking about him. You don't have to talk about yourself. Thank people you. will talk about what's in Jesus. you. People will talk about what's in you. You don't have to brag about yourself. In chapter 7, it says David is sent by his father to take Take food to his three older brothers who are at war with Saul against the Philistines. We all know the Philistines was like a a a a, 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 a thorn in the Israel in the Israelite side. They were always at war with them. They were always being bullied by the Philistines. And here, once ago, once again, they're being bullied by the Philistines, and so they're being tormented. And to keep from losing all of their men, they take the Philistines, take their strongest champion, and they say, "Give us your strongest champion, and let's see who wins." And so uh -huh. no one is able, no one is a, a, a strong enough or faithful enough or have the, the strength of God or the faith in God enough to step up. And so they're all shaking in their boots and just standing to the wayside. And so David's father sends him to go and take food to the three brothers who have gone out to war. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. We think that's nice. We want to brag about people going to war. But if they get to war, they're too scared to do something. What are we bragging about? Oh, Jesus. Amen. So it goes on to say that Eliab, which was David's older brother, the first to be rejected by God when Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint him as the next king, he's upset at David's presence. Mm. Wow. <laughs> my God, my God. Jealousy. Want me to read it again? Jealousy. He's upset at his presence. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go over to 17. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to read it for yourself. When you have time, go back and read. Let me see if I can find this. Chapter 17. If you have, if you know where I am, just holler it out for me. Okay. And 28. Yeah. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down here? And with whom. And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Right, see, your job. 
<laughs> you know, when people, when people are intimidated by you, when people are jealous by you, mm. when people don't like what God is God. doing or going to do in your oh, life, God, they'll try God. to find one something, yeah. something yeah. about you yeah. to, to on, make Lisa. seem small, yeah. to Come make on, seem it's not worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. And so he says, those few sheep. Why you ain't doing the few sheep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you not out there with those few sheep? So you want to make what I'm on, doing God. a Come little on, effect because you're jealous of what God, the big Come thing on, that God, God is going to do on, in my Lord. life and God did not choose you. Yeah. Woo. Come on. And with whom hast thou left these few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. People think they know you. But he wasn't speaking because he knew his brother and was yeah, trying to rebuke his brother and trying to teach his brother and pour into his brother and build his brother's character. But he was speaking out of anger and jealousy because he knew his brother was the one that was anointed to be the next king. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. You didn't come down here to see the battle. You just want to come down here and show off Jesus. because you're going to be the next king. Jesus. Amen. You better speak, Lord. He's upset about David's presence as well as his confidence in trusting God. Sometimes people mix our confidence and trust in God up with thinking that we're prideful or we're cocky. Yes. Go ahead on, yes. There's a difference yes. in being conf cocky yes. and being confident right. in knowing who God is and what God is going to do right. and Amen. who you are to God and what God said. Right. His Amen. brother interprets it as a prideful and naughtiness of his heart. He tells him, you didn't come down here just to see the battle. Mm -hmm. There are people that have witnessed the anointing on your life and are not happy about it. They feel as if you are getting something that they should go, they should, and they go to, to and mm, they feel as if you, you are getting something that they should. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. With a little bit that you got. Yeah. Jesus, come on! Woo, my God, my God. They Jesus. feel that they are entitled uh -huh. to what God has anointed you, you for. Come on. Uh -huh. Jesus, come on! Ooh, Jesus. God's ways are not our ways, yeah. and God's thoughts are not our Jesus. thoughts. If you having a problem with my anointing, if you having a problem with what God has called me to do, then I suggest you take it up with God. Yes, we you. know that David, young David, as a matter of fact, he was a teenager. He stands up to Goliath and he kills him. Yes. Verse 38 through 40 says he is offered a, re a rejected king's armor. Saul offers David his armor. Mind you, Saul is already rejected. And he is offered a rejected king's armor, but he says he wasn't comfortable in it because he had not proved it and would use what God had given him to you. Be comfortable in what God has given you to you. Don't try to wear someone else's, especially if they are already rejected. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. So what was the weaponry that David had compared to what Saul wanted to give him? His weaponry was a shepherd's weaponry. He had a staff. He had four stones that he put in a shepherd's bag. And he had his sling. You can do more damage in what is fitted for you than that which is fitted for someone else. You can do more damage in what's fitted for you than what's fitted for somebody else. Chapter 18 tells us that Saul is afraid of David because the Lord was with him and had departed from Saul. Yes. Hallelujah. The devil is afraid of us yes. because God is with us and he has departed from Satan. Yes. So he's going to do whatever he has to do, hallelujah, to get to us. Yes. He's going to conspire to kill us. Yes. He's going to conspire to take what God has for us. Yes. He's going to try to get us off course. He's going to try to make us uncomfortable. He's going to bring light to those things that we are striving to improve in our life. life. The Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren. Yes. But God, but thank God. God for the blood of Jesus hallelujah. Christ that no matter how much he accuses us, God can't see what he's accusing us of because all he sees is the blood of his son. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. So Saul being afraid of him, now he makes him a captain over a thousand. 
He says, I'm afraid of him taking my position. I'm afraid of how the people love him. I'm afraid of how they're praising him, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to set him up. He's going to think I'm elevating him and giving him something nice because I'm making him a captain of a, of a battalion, but what I'm doing, I'm really setting him up to kill him so he can't replace me. I'm setting him up to kill him so that the people won't, will no longer be able to love him and praise him. But the scripture says, hallelujah, even when your enemy set out to kill you and God shows you, the scripture says David behaved himself wisely in all the ways of, and the Lord was with him. I want to encourage us this morning that we've got to learn to behave ourselves wisely in spite of what the enemy is trying to do to us. It is not catching God by surprise. God has not lost his vision. God has not lost his mind. God has not lost his hearing. God has not lost his power. He is still in control and knows exactly what he's doing. And then what is for us is going to still be for us. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. Behave ourselves wisely in all of our ways. Not some of our ways. Not some of the time. Not when things are going right. But even when things are not going right. Help us to behave ourselves wisely. What am I saying? What am I getting out of this? What am I want? What I want to share with us this morning is I want to talk to us about how to conduct ourselves when the enemy is against us, yeah. when he is using people, and sometimes those that are the closest to us, yeah. when the anointing on our lives is questioned, yeah. when the anointing on our lives is threatened, yeah. when the anointing on our lives, Amen, is being talked about, yeah. when people are jealous of us, when people yeah. hate us, when people People conspire against us. Yeah. I want to tell us that we still got to learn how to conduct ourselves yeah. Hallelujah. wisely. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And all of that Saul did. All that Saul did. And even in David knowing God had rejected Saul and anointed him, David still behave himself wisely. Once again, I tell you, in just the 18th chapter, we the same word, the same verse is repeated three times. According to Proverbs 9 and 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. As I kept saying to myself, behave yourself wisely. Then I said, well, what is wisely? How do I behave myself wisely? I first need to understand wisdom and what, and what wisely mean before I'm able to do it. And so I went and I searched and the Proverbs 9 tells me that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when I look back on the life of David, even though he had frailties, even though he had shortcomings, even though he had falls, even though he had issues, he always had a fear for God. Amen. A reverence for God. We can have knowledge and no wisdom. But we cannot have wisdom and no knowledge. David understood and used wisdom in knowing that although God rejected Saul, yet Saul was still on the throne. And it was not the appointed time to take his place or disrespect him in his office. He understood that Jehovah God was the ultimate king. He was the head. He was the provider. He was the way maker for the children of Israel and he feared God more than he feared man. Yes. Behave yes. yourself wisely. Yes. Verse 17, Saul sends David to war hoping he would die in war but David behaved himself wisely and the Lord was with David. Come on then, we got to be honest and say that when we know somebody is setting us up, when we know somebody is about to stab us in our back, do we really behave wisely or do we try to find a way to get them before they get us? Come on, come on, speak it. Help us, Lord. But David trusted God. Yes. He had respect for God, therefore he had respect for God's order. He had respect for God's uh, uh, chain of command. And until God set him down, he still had to respect the order. He, he still had to respect the house. He still had to respect the king. 
verse 21, he gives David his youngest daughter to be a snare to him. Earlier on, he had promised him the older daughter, the oldest daughter, yes. and then he reneged on that agreement. And so now he offers the youngest one, but not because he did not he uh, gave the oldest away, but he did it to be a snare to him. That's right. People will give you things, people will come in your you life, know, not to, for you to grow, not for you to be strengthened, not for you to walk in your purpose, yeah. but they're sent there, they come into your life to be a snare to you, yeah. to keep you out of the will of yeah. God, to keep you operating yourself and in flesh, yeah. and not operating yeah. the remnant and the anointing and the power of the living God. Everyone will not rejoice in what God has for you and is going to do in your life, especially when they are rejected of God. Amen. Or when they covet what God has for you. They will conspire to kill you. They will dig a pit for you. But what I want us to remember is to behave wisely and watch God be your strong tower and your defense. Stay close to God, to his word, and behave wisely. I recall when some issues happened on the job and things went on and everybody was looking in my face. They were watching me because they wanted to see my response. And every morning I would pray and ask God to be my strength, to be my faith, to help me to smile, to help me not to let them know that I was affected by what the by the darts that I knew was being sent to me, that I was not being affected by the pit that was set for me. And every day I tell you when I went in, people were just looking at me, staring, they'd be like, you okay? They wanted to see me crumble. They wanted to see me cry. They wanted to see me affected by what was being done to me. But I bless the name of the living God that I behave myself wisely. And what they thought they were doing that was pushing me back. God was setting me up. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Behave. And the same ones that were against me, the same ones that were trying to set trap, the same ones that were talking about me, the same ones that were digging for me, the same ones that was continuing to try to usurp authority over me, can't say a word to me. Hallelujah. Can't say a word to me. Amen. He's put me on the same level with them. Jesus. Hallelujah. Prepare the table in the presence yes. of the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Yes. Went from having a leader that wanted to press me to having a leader that says, I trust you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Do what you do. I don't have to follow up. Do what you do. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Saul so saw the favor of God and the people. Uh, and the people loved David, and he was afraid of David and became David's enemy. Can you imagine you are my enemy because of the favor of God on my life? Yeah. I have not done anything to you but been peaceful with you. Right. I have not done anything but prayed for you. I have not done anything but prayed my played my heart for you. I have not done anything but been a friend been a friend to your son yeah. for you. I have not done anything but been nice to your daughter, and this is what you want to do to me. If we be honest, our response wouldn't be to behave wisely. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help me. Saul Jesus. and David's character were totally contrasting. Saul made excuses and Saul blamed others. Saul was jealous and envious, yeah. self centered and disobedient to God. Yeah. Yet David was humble. humble. He was quick to repent. He was valiant and obedient. And so here we see David being loved. By the women, being loved by the people, being praised by the praisers, the women. They said, Saul, he killed a thousand, but David, Give he killed ten thousand. Yeah. He was envied by Saul. Amen. Saul alienated him. But even in him alienating him, how oh my God, hallelujah, Lord God, God will have someone in your corner. Yeah. God allowed his own son, Lord, Saul's own, own son, son yeah. to be own faithful son. to the yeah. very end to David, own to son. help David to escape. Yeah. He took off every part of his garments and gave it to David, not being ashamed, not being of envious, not being jealous, but understanding the will and purpose of God. Yeah. Thank God. Even when the enemy tries to alienate you, God is faithful to have someone yeah. to be there for you. David was feared and he was schemed against. But the Bible says that David behaved himself wisely. Amen. Behaved himself wisely looks a lot like humility. 
We too may find ourselves being alienated and feared by people and schemed against and eyed and envied and some may love us and some may praise us and the anointing may be on us, but we but be comforted in knowing God is still with us yes. and for us. Amen. And all we have to do is rest in him and behave wisely. Behave wisely. God is working it out. Amen. So, preacher, you just told me this story. You told me what happened with these men, but what does that have to do with me? There are people afraid of the favor and anointing on our lives and are jealous at every turn to set up and to destroy us, to kill us, to make us even look bad. But at each turn, they will see that God is with us. Amen. But how do I behave myself wisely? Don't just rejoice in what God is going to do for you. Rejoice in being obedient and conducting yes. yourself the way God expects you to conduct yourself. Amen. We've got to stay in prayer constantly. Yes. The scriptures tell us that we ought to pray without ceasing. We have to be obedient to God. We can't pick and choose when to be obedient. Yes. We have to be obedient to his word and to his instructions. Yes. And instead of looking to get back at people, instead of looking to do tit for tat, because we got to be honest, yes. we, did, we are human and this is yes. how the human mind acts sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but a converted yeah. heart yeah. should be a heart that behaves itself wisely. Yeah. An unconverted heart yeah. will be looking to get back at people. Yeah. We're looking to do tit for tat. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Looking to defend ourselves and make the other and make the ways of the other person known. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just behave yourself wisely and rest in the peace and the defense of God. Because wherever God is elevating you to, no man can sabotage it. No man can take it. No man can set you up or keep you from it. God will continue to show he is with you and not with them. He will continue to show you and say to them, like he said to Saul, sat down. Amen. In conclusion, may we walk in faith in God and not in ourselves. Walk in humility and not in pride. Walk in a heart of repentance. Stay in prayer and obedience to the word and to the voice of God. And do not be ambitious, but wait on, on the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The scriptures encourage us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything oh, by prayer and, and supplication, supplication with, with thanksgiving, with let your requests be Amen. made known yes. to the Father. That is in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Thank you, Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all, all your heart, heart and lean not to your own understanding. understanding. In all, all your ways, ways, not some of your ways, all. in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord God, yes. and he shall direct your path. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Lord, give me your eyes, give me your heart, give me your mind, that I may operate in your wisdom and not mine. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Yes. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Practice wisdom. David, although he was anointed by Samuel as the next king, he respected Saul yes. and his authority. Yes. He yes. served yes. him patiently and faithfully yes, in did. every aspect. Uh -huh. He did not respond. He did not remind Saul that he was rejected and that he was the next king. Jesus. Understand that the wisdom is from God. Proverbs 2 and 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh -huh. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Understand he layeth up sound wisdom for righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Yes. Lastly, I want to leave us with James, the first chapter. It says, Tell it tells us if any of us lack wisdom, yes. let us ask yes. of God yes. that giveth to yes. all men liberally and yes. unbraideth yes. not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with wind and tossed. Solomon asked for wisdom and God granted it to him. Solomon was a young boy, eight years old, and understand that he needed the wisdom of God, not his own wisdom, not the wisdom of his parents, not the wisdom of those kings that preceded him, but the wisdom of God to lead God's people. This allowed him to discern situations and make decisions that were hard to make with the natural mind. James 3 says in verse 17, it tells us that the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Amen. It's then peaceable. It's gentle and easy to be entreated. Jesus. It's full of mercy and good fruits 
without partiality Hallelujah. and without hypocrisy. David's heart was pure before the Lord. He was humble and he remained at peace with Saul. When the opportunity presented itself That's for him right. to kill That's Saul, right. he, he, rebuked, he rebuked yes, Saul's he men for yes, allowing him to even allowing get that close to, to do it. Yes, yes, he did. He did. Yes, he did. He was respectful of Saul's office, and he did his job when asked with excellence and valor. He extended mercy to the last member of Saul's family. He said that it will always be someone from his house to sit at his table to eat. Methbosheth, we don't know that. Behave wisely so that good fruit may be produced by, for the Father. God is in control, saints, and he is never caught off guard or unaware of the situation at hand. We all know that David was not perfect by any means. He had faults and he had frailties. But he was a man that feared God. He reverenced God. He was a humble man. And he was quick to repent. David, uh, <clears throat> may we never let our failures keep us from the love of God. Amen. May we never let our failures keep us from the wisdom of God. May we never keep let our failures keep us from the reverence of God. Some of us were taught that when you make your bed that you have to lie in it. But as I searched the scripture, I did not see a scripture where it says when you make your bed, lie in it. It says come unto me. The Lord is looking for us to come unto him. He's looking for us to turn. He's looking for us to repent. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash them as white as snow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He forgave David after knowing that David conspired for murder. He forgave David after David of was found to be an adulterer he forgave him God's wisdom is more perfect than our own James tells us in chapter 3 and 13 who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom but if ye be, have bitter envying and strife in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom comes from above does not come from above, but it comes from straight from Lord. you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless and magnify your name. We give you glory and you go honor, Lord God. We thank you for your word, which is true. We thank you for your spirit, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is like a two-edged sword, oh God, that it cuts very down to the very deep part, the parts that no one knows about. It cuts, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that ministered to us, oh God. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to endow us with your wisdom, Lord yes, God, God, that we may conduct ourselves yes, as, as we should, Lord yes, God, God, for the glory sake, for the kingdom yes, sake, Lord God. May we not be moved by situations and circumstances, but may we stand, Father God, in faith and on your word. May we stand in humility, Lord God, and not in selfishness, Lord God. May we stand in your love and stand in mercy, Lord God. May we remember, Lord God, that what you have spoken to us, what you have for us, it is for us, that it cannot be taken away. May we be respectful, Lord God, when people are out of order, Lord God. May we, Lord God, look to you to be our defense. May we look to you, Lord God, to speak on our behalf. May we look to you, Lord God, to to bring our enemies low, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for your encouragement, oh God. We thank you for speaking to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are good God all by yourself. You are great and you are greatly to be praised, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you glory and we give you honor. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.